Hi everyone. Today is Friday, October the 27th, and this is the Moneyball Morning Report for the Benzinga Pro Platform. My name is Anne-Marie Band, and what are we looking at? We are looking at a flag that has dropped out of the range, but you know, it's moving into that space. For those of us on the Benzinga Pro Platform, I did talk about, hey, listen, we've got ourselves a little bounce zone setting up. Why did I say that? Because of this area in heavy congestion, right? We really are in a big fat range. If we had bought and held all the way over here, let's look a little bit to the left, right? If we bought here in November, excuse me, in April of 2021, we'd actually be about flat, right? That tells us that our markets are grinding. Now, a lot of people are going, ooh, that's a double top. Listen, it could be, but what does a double top mean? right? I don't know, right? Some people measure from here to here and they go, all right, what's 50% of that? And so let's do that. Let's measure from here to here. And we'll see that 50% is, what do you know? 413. So this is a space people are going to say, I'm going to try and carve a floor out. Now, trouble spots to me for the day is that as we got into the highs in the overnight, everybody just cleaned out. And then this is London's open and we've crashed to the floor. Okay. And so I crash, you know, we're making higher lows. My happenstance would be, hey, if we get fortunate that this is a trending day and we hold these edges, once we break 415, we'll have more upward flow. Right now, they don't look really excited. So I am going to say be cautious about going long today. Now, why? Well, let's look at the last three candles, not counting the one we're in. High, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, lower, low, though a doji. But that doji, once we got into that area, we could not seem to recapture this 415 area. So that's going to be the fly in our ointment, as it were. <clears throat> I don't even know why we still use that terminology. It's all the apothecary thing, but never mind. So here's what we're looking at. Are we under the close of the prior date? Yes, that means bulls tried to do something about that and they couldn't. And so now sellers are pushing price action down. Where is the floorboard that says, you know, I don't need to be trying to pick any bottoms in the near term. Well, that's going to be at the break of this 411. If we break 411, we've got 409, yeah, 409, 408 and a quarter, something like that. This heavy congestion event. Notice, monthly charts still have us bullish. This is a giant monthly flag pattern. Weekly charts have us slightly bearish, but coming into weeks and weeks of support, right? This is going to be critical mass. That's what we're going to have to watch for. I did look at the option chains and option chains news, and apparently there are lots of puts that are being sold at the 4,000 area, okay? So here's the problem. <laughs> if we continue to drift, the guys who have sold this are going to be in scramble mode to sell some more of it lower, which means that we could really have ourselves an aggravated move down because they have to balance their hedge. That makes no sense. Don't even worry about it. What we are anticipating is this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks of congestion. It's going to provide a support pocket for us. Deep fades into this area. I expect buyers to show up. So if we have a savage sell-off, I'm going to be hawking this area around 4120 to look for some action that I can hold. Okay? And that's going to be the same for SPY. Maybe we set up a long butterfly that won't cost a lot that gives us some upward flow back into the resistance zone if we collapse really hard. Now, sometimes we end up being sideways, and so that could be what we're after, right? What do we want to not break? Well, we want to not break 4160, right? That's been 
a line in the sand since May, right? This level I know very, very well. Interestingly, 4260, also an important zone, 100 points below, right? So we are moving at a clip. This is a fair clip. Now, what normally happens when we have these aggressive sell-offs is we have buyers that come back in. So that's what we're looking for, the floors. In the meantime, folks, bounces or sell-offs. Right now, as long as we hold 4161, we've got a shot at buying the dip. Where are the sellers right now? Let's take a look at the four hour. Sellers sitting at 4180, 4184, also a fairly big zone that we were watching yesterday, right? And buyers coming in at this 4161, they just came in, right? Now, if we're trying to sell, we need to try and sell up here with all the heavy congestion into the resistance area. Maybe you make 4184 your stop and you look at 4177 or so as your entry, 4179, 4180. That's gonna be me, right? I'm gonna be scalping up at those edges and moving into the range up there. I will be on IBD Live today if anybody wants to see. I think they're giving like a three week thing for way cheap. So, uh, and the guests on there are phenomenal. All right. Um, so this is what we're looking at for here. We're going to pump the brakes on any kind of long action here, but the primary trade is sell the bounce and it's up there. Okay. When you get into this area, you cover and then you watch for the next bounce to short. Let's take a look finally at the NQ. All right. Having the NQ, look at this, support zone. This looks much more bullish. A lot of people are very, very keen on tech holding the floors. But my thought process is that tech needs a lot of money to move. And they're usually, big tech is not, but smaller tech is usually um, carrying a fair bit of debt, right? Because they're on the cutting edge. They spend a lot in R&D. Um, so there we have that to have a PCAT. Here we are holding a floor. What's important today? Well, it's important that we don't break this area at 14,250, okay? If we break that area, we've got maybe a double bottom. This has one, two, three, four months touching this region, hence traders trying to hold this edge. Bounces are still sell zones. The bounces into 14,500, 14,450, that's going to fill the gap. Could traders do it and then turn right around? Yes. So what's the space? Listen, if you get up over 14,350, you're going to have to start looking at longs, right? Pick a side because right here, if it bounces, it can rock it all the way up there before you get a short. So if it's above here, do not short until it starts losing this line at 14,380, and then you can get yourself back into the short. If you want to take a long, wait for the dip. If the dip breaks 14,250, you got to get out of Dodge. Last thing I want to look at today, let's take a peek at oil. It's all over the place, right? But moving right in our ranges. I haven't put a brand new line on here in days and days and days, right? It went from 85 all the way down to 83, all the way back up to 85 yesterday. And now what's it doing? Fading into, look at that, old support. But is it really old support? I don't know. But here's what I'm thinking. Support, resistance, anywhere up near 85.50, it's going to be a short unless you break 85.80. If you break 85.80, then you're going to move up into this area around 86.50, and as we know, oil is very heavy leveraged, and you're gonna get your face ripped off if you try and hold for that W sitting there, right? My thought is, if it breaches this area and you're thinking about shorting, you better wait. If it pulls back and it holds 84.50, you know that 84.30 is your floor, you can take another long, all right? That's it for me, folks. Have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday. And of course, you'll see me on the trading platforms.